my channel. My name is Sianda Mavimbela, but you guys can always call me Sia because you guys are my best friends. However, today I am going to be doing something slightly different, but I feel it's very important. I feel like social media and, you know, all these platforms, everything is fast paced and something is different. You know, everything lacks human nature. Uh, people are not so compassionate anymore. Everything is so fast paced. No one really cares. Everybody's just pushing, you know, for likes. People are just out there, you know, to portray maybe a facade of a life that they're living or maybe trying to brag about the life that they're living or perhaps maybe, you know, I don't know. I'm not those people and I don't want to assume or, you know, give out any assumptions. But what I know is that, you know, people are struggling with depression. People are really, really sad. People are so easily you know, triggered. Um, people don't know how to deal with stresses anymore. Guys, I've been in that situation before. And like I did mention in the previous video that last year, I kind of felt it. Um, I felt it because I was mostly isolated and I couldn't go anywhere. And I was in my thoughts the entire time. Sometimes you don't want to talk about these things because you feel like no one is going to relate. But that's all lies. People will relate. But some people don't cope in the same way. Some people are better at hiding it. Um, and some people really don't really care. And, you know, and some people, people are different. And that's just one of those things that I enjoy about people like i'm so passionate about people like people that know me would always tell you oh see ya like she's always smiling i remember even in high school i was like teased as being smiley because that's what i enjoyed and that was my form of you know showing people who would see i'm present and i'm here because do you know what i'm saying and i kind of feel that even my purpose somehow is kind of like aligned with bettering the humankind and somewhere along the line i think that's the story for everybody irrespective of whether you're going to be an entrepreneur even if you're going to be selling a product i mean who is your target market it's people and obviously you're selling a product to make whose life better the people so yeah anyway i'm not gonna ramble i'm gonna go straight into it all right so i felt this was very important because i kind of feel like self-esteem is the root and the fundamental thing okay that always needs to be in the right before anything before you enter any relationship whether you are at work whether you are you know starting a business like you guys you need to be confident with YouTube, I've always wanted to go into, you know, YouTube and put myself out there. But over the years, I was I never felt like I was ready for it. I always felt like, uh, well, how are people going to receive me? What am I going to do? And I kind of feel like YouTube nowadays is so monotonous. Reason being is that everybody's into beauty. No, high respect. I do respect that. But I'm more than just a cute face, you know. I know that in the Atande Ega, I know that I'm pretty. But I feel like there's so much more to me. And then why do I not share this beautiful thought? with everybody else you know and if I say that I love people so much then how about you know because love is a doing word then what am I going what am I doing to actually you know fulfill this purpose of mine of feeling that like I need to always give back and you know make someone's life better or when people have like you know an encounter with me i want to make sure that they leave you know feeling like oh my god i feel so light i feel like you know something just got off my shoulders that you're not alone anyway so self-esteem self-esteem is very important you need to fully trust yourself trust in your past your dreams all of that is valid all of that is valid you guys so i just jotted down you know some things because i don't want to waste people's data and i'm going to go for a short but impact yeah <laughs> so that's what i'm trying to do right now so basically how to build your um, your self-esteem and what I wrote down was identify a problem in condition. 
what, what do I mean? Sia, what do you, like, what do you mean, bro? Like, come through. Okay. So, you need to identify. Why do you feel that you do not trust yourself in that, in that area? Why do you feel that you, why do you feel inadequate in that area? I'll make an example about myself. I'm not perfect. I'm a single parent, you know, and I'm studying psychology in my 30s obviously you can actually pick up that okay this girl is kind of maybe delayed you know so i know a little bit of something so you'll find yourself that you're inadequate in a situation maybe in a relationship you are not a good communicator maybe you want to tell your partner you know you want to have intimacy with your partner but you don't know how to engage because you've never been in a situation or in a, you never even grew up in a family whereby you sit down and you have this kind of intimate conversations. So you don't even know how to apply it in your own relationship, in your in relation your own relationships with your friends. When there's conflict, you don't know how to address it. You know, you are scared, you are fearful, you are doubtful. So that's point one. You know where the problem is, right? And then that's at least you know from there where to go like the next step all right so like i did mention there so those are your triggers basically so for me it would have been my workplace because i currently work in an it environment and i just want to you know let you guys know i ain't gonna you know i do not have any qualifications for it i do have some certificates but i'm not like the people that i work with that have like you know degrees and so and so whatnot <laughs> i don't all right so i was in a situation where i kind of felt like yeah, maybe you undermine la because maybe vele angna yo it degree. Minang ne experience. I'm just one of those girls from you know where uh, you know God was very gracious with me, and I got myself you know I'm working for an IT law firm, and um, you know and I've been there for the longest time, and I thank God for that. Um, and you kind of feel like you don't deserve it, but then another thing, I had to go through a, a process where I. I acknowledge that yes, I'm there and I deserve to be there because there's a reason why they even employed me to begin with. So therefore that light should shine and come through. So up until you actually have that conversation with yourself, guys, it wasn't easy. I had to even go to therapy. Like I was going through the most. So those are the triggers, examples of your triggers. Why do you feel doubtful? Why do you feel that you cannot trust yourself? Why do you feel that you are not good enough? That's a trigger. You know what I'm saying? And then think about like, you know, the conditions that deflate your self-esteem. Like I just made an example because I did not, I don't have a degree in IT communication. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that is why I kind of felt like maybe I don't belong there in a, an environment where majority it's men and these men don't even, I can't even relate to these men much because they, you know, um, they are like white Caucasian men, men that most speak Afrikaans. Yeah, we do speak. We can be cordial and civil because we work together. But I, I don't feel like maybe I have anything, you know, that will be similar. Because it's a state of mind. It's a state of mind. And that is not true. I'm sure most of them probably feel like, oh, you know, they like me. I'm bubbly, you know, I'm easy to talk to. And they don't know that I'm going through a lot. Like, because I'm killing myself, because I feel like I don't deserve to be there. Forgetting that, oh, but Tunkandi, these people, why did they employ, employ you to begin with? So identify those type of things. And I'm using my examples, and you guys can use your examples. So I, maybe let's make an example that you, maybe you are in a relationship, and this man used to beat you up. And this man used to tell you that you're nothing. By the time you're in a relationship with a man that is so wholesome and loving, a man that truly, you know, sees you, a man that validates you, a man that empowers you and that supports you, there will be a part of you that will feel like how was yeah i don't deserve this and then what is this one you're waiting for him to disappoint you because first of all your mind is conditioned to believe that when you are less than and you do not deserve you know what i'm saying so you need to pick up triggers and another thing about relationships 
your partners will always, you know, show things, parts of you. You will always find those things. They'll always come up. That's why in relationships, when you like, when you're intimate with someone, you find yourself guilty. Maybe you are scared, <laughs> you know, because they are kind of like, I'll come back with the word, guys. It's like a psychology term. Um, so be, be aware. Step three. You need to be self-aware. This is something that I thrive in. I love this. Okay? I'm not going to even look at this anymore because this is the things that I do every day. Guys, if you come through and you start noticing my week, girl, I didn't lay it. I was working the whole day. I My shift ended at 5. And I just went to bath quickly so I can make a video for you guys. Because it kind of... I was watching ooh, OK Smalls, her video and she was talking about how she was abused physically by this dude and this guy like the first encounter was he was an insecure man and this man ended up like you know putting his hands on her and the following morning he was like she's seen things this didn't happen guess lighting and I kind of felt like, you know, probably the reasons why we don't leave situations is because we don't feel like maybe we deserve more. Because someone from the outside, it's easy for them to say, I mean, you know, I would have left that relationship a long time ago, out the door, you know, but that's not, that's not the case, you know, it's, you need to work on yourself, it takes courage. And not a lot of people have that courage. Another thing, guys, we live in a, in a country where, you know, guys, you know, gender-based violence is at its highest. It is scary. It is scary to go on dates. It is scary to fully trust people. Uh, I, turned out, I turned down a date last week with this dude. And I feel like he was a cool dude, but I was like, firstly, I just want to say that this guy was like a white man, first of all. And because I'm a black, thick girl, I kind of obviously have these things where I'm like, okay, is he fetishizing me? Does he want me because I'm thick, BBW, because men sometimes, I don't know of late when you are a fat woman and you're a confident woman, men obviously will be like, oh... You're so beautiful. You're so confident. Um, of course, I have to be beautiful and confident because I love myself. This has got nothing to do with my weight. Almost as if like I should be hating myself because Mrs. Dulda. Like I want to throw that zap sign in your face. I want to... <clears throat> of course, I'm beautiful. Tell me something new. So, okay, the guy I'm going... That's my stories. So, anyways, I'm like, you know, I was like to the guy, he was like aggressively wanting to see me. And and, and it, it makes sense if you're on a dating site that a, a guy will want to date you because he understands that there's other women, men hitting you up. So, the dude was like, when am I going to see you? Can I, can I at least come and see you over the weekend? Listen, I don't live in a suburb, okay? It's a semi suburb, but not really in the ghetto, ghetto, but the ghetto. Yeah, but, but then he was like, no, he's gonna come over. And I was like, yo, and why are you coming? Why are you so forthcoming? Why are you? Hmm? Hmm? You are persistent. I'm like, you're giving me Ted Bundy uh, vibes. <laughs> Guys, he unmatched me, and I don't blame him because imagine if someone said the same thing, you know, to you. So, yeah, so, you know going back to how you guys can pick it up every day mirror work mirror work i used to do mirror work and i was not even away i used to do mirror work may, may my brother's soul rest in peace i used to annoy him every morning when we were getting ready to go to school because we would walk to school you guys i would stand in the mirror knowing very well that my brother wants to use the bathroom and i'll stand in the mirror and i'd be like oh my god i'm so beautiful God, why did you make me so beautiful? Uh, like, I'm so sad for Rabanya Bantuana. Why am I so pretty? Uh, uh, I'm so beautiful. Guys, I used to do that all the time. And my brother just come banging on the door. Ba, ba, ba. Sianda, pull my toilet. It's so late. <laughs> so that's how it was. So I used to do that. And I, and I never knew that I was affirming to myself. And I was telling myself that I was beautiful. And this continued for years. And even some of my friends would be like, yo, Sianda, you're too much. But then now I understand that they were only just projecting their fears onto me. That they were not confident in themselves. That, you know, they were shocked as well. Who is she to love herself this much? But girl, here's the thing. 
You work on yourself because no one is going to come and save you. You will meet a man who loves you, but up until you learn how to love yourself, it ain't gonna work, honey. Because you, every time he does something for you, you're gonna question, why is he doing this for me? I don't deserve it. The poor guy is gonna be like, I'm out with his friends. When are you gonna think like, oh, he's probably with some woman. And he isn't. You know what I'm saying? His self-esteem, who's temper, who's tender, who's zing, <laughs> are you guys still here are you guys still here anyway so you need to affirm that every day you guys notice in my bedroom i have like cute affirmations where i speak directly as to myself that i love myself i am beautiful i am smart i am intelligent i am fierce i am a boss babe i am a great mom like you need to tell yourself these things before someone else can tell you by the time someone else see you know tells you these things about uh, you are self-aware you already know these things that are true and more you know what i'm saying and another thing is to be mindful to be mindful of the things that you, especially when you're stressed it's always money with us women. You stressed about Imali. I'm in debt, blah, 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 blah. Money comes, money goes. Money will come, money will take care of whatever that needs to be taken care of. Don't face, it, look at the problem. Think of a solution. I don't have money right now. Call someone. Someone must buy you Because if you're going to stress about it, and then what? Do you know that stress actually causes illnesses, you guys? Stress causes illnesses. You want to try and eliminate your stress. When you're working on yourself, you want to work on your breathing. You want to take time out and journal how you feel. You want to journal out and actually be thankful, guys. Practice the gratitude. I hope you guys are writing these things down. Practice gratitude. There are people who want the things that you have. There are people who wish they were alive today. If obviously, you know, if you believe that when people pass on, the people don't really die. You know, they want to be alive and they want to be able to touch you. There are people who, are, who have no homes. There are people who don't have food. A single thing in their fridge. Mara, when at least you were able to sleep with You know, you were able to do it, you know. Guys, the, the women who want to get married, you know, but haven't been, you know, lucky enough or hasn't, the time hasn't come for them to meet their partners. Be grateful. Practice gratitude every day. Affirmations. Affirm yourself. And another thing is that when you reprogram your mind, your mind does end up believing it. You guys, you're not... Ever since I started this, because depression kicked in last year. My brother passed away last year, September. I was going after that throughout the year. Boom. I felt like I was losing Kamu. No one knew. My friends were like, okay, whatever. But then up until I was like, no, I need help. I seek out help. And I've been seeing a psychologist. I've been seeing, I've been going to therapy. Um, obviously not face to face, but I've been, you know, consulting in therapy and I'm enjoying it, you guys, because now we going, we talk about childhood traumas, things, you know, that triggered me, the reason why I'm in a situation like that and how I can actually pick and how I can actually forgive myself, you know, for the things that I've done to myself in the past and that Apem Shabeni in this thing called life, there's no such thing as right and that's wrong. The only thing you need to focus on is just being kind to people and doing right by people because no one has the right to kill anyone or anything like that. But otherwise, if you choose to get married at 40, good by you. If you want, don't want to get married, it's fine. If you don't, if you want to quit your job tomorrow, good for you. If do things that make you happy because that's the only that thing that matters. Life is hella short. Life is hella short. Be kind to yourself. Practice the affirmations. Love yourself wholly. Everything about yourself. Imperfections and everything because at the end of the day, there is no other, you know, Manisha. There is no other Lusanda. There is no other Ntebukheng. There is no other, you know, Luyanda. There is no other Nandipa. There is no other person like you. You are here for a reason. So you need to live your life up until, until to the T. 
anyway i love you guys so much i hope this makes a difference you guys have a beautiful week we'll talk again you know me scars me no i'm right here next door you know how it is it's you it's me over there come on yes <laughs>